that will be joining us for that conference, Pastor Terry Logan. Um, so we would love for you guys to invite friends out with you, bring family along, any ladies that you want to have come to the conference, let them know, save the date for May 18th. Um, we do have some other fun things planned for that uh, conference, so you won't want to miss out on that. Um, and next we're going to move into five minutes for faith, so I want to welcome Pastor L back up, and we'll get ready to go into that next. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Since you're in the mood, let's go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We are excited to be back out in the house of the Lord. Okay, I guess I might need that little microphone thing there. And um, really quick, um, before we, a couple of things I want to do right before, I don't want to break the protocol of service too much, but some things I want to do right before we move forward. Number one is um, I want us to pray. Uh, I, my, um, I have uh, on family on my mother's side uh, and um, uh, who are the uh, Honeakers. Am I saying that right? And um, one of our cousins uh, was killed the other day in a car accident in Arizona. And um, the family is a godly family, loves the Lord. And uh, I want you to join me in praying and uh, interceding um, for that family so that the Lord brings comfort uh, and uh, that the spirit of sorrow does not overtake that family, amen? amen. I believe as we release our faith together, that it'll work and we'll get results. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Because, Lord, you are a good God. And, Lord, we thank you that you are the giver of life. And, uh, Lord, concerning what has happened with our dear brother, Lord, we pray that you would comfort that family. Lord, that you would strengthen them in their spirit, by your spirit. Uh, sorrow and grief, in the name of Jesus, we come against you. And we break your power. We cancel your assignment. Lord, we pray that you get involved so that the enemy does not misinterpret your character yeah. to this family, Lord. That even through this, Lord that they would see that you are a God of love. You are a God that is concerned with everything they face. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would just meet the needs wherever it may be. Meet those needs, comfort them, Lord, in their soul. Lord, uh, in this time of, of recovery and grief, Lord, uh, that the family comes together in support of each other. And Lord, we just thank you for those things. We believe we receive it now, in Jesus' name, yes. amen. amen. Come on, let's give a little praise for that. Amen. amen. To the Honeacre family, we here at AWOFC extend our deepest condolences to the family uh, concerning this uh, unfortunate uh, event. Amen. amen. All right, um, let's get ready to move forward. One other thing. Um, uh, before we do that, um, I tell you what, my heart almost leaped today, glory be to God. You know why? I looked up and saw the brother walk into the church, glory be to God. Now listen, our brother uh, has been, if you hear this brother's testimony, and we'll make time for him to get this testimony recorded to share it, but I tell you the word is real and the gospel is real. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but this brother was, when we first came in contact with him, was literally sleeping and living under a bridge or in the woods. Is that correct? In the woods. In the woods. Not even the bridge was the, it was the woods. Glory be to God. Living in the woods and uh, was an atheist, so didn't believe there was a such thing as a God at all. And uh, came to the Lord. And the Lord gloriously saved him. Back in the day, we used to call that 
sweetly saved. Is that what we used to call it, Sister Ravella? Where it was authentic, you didn't have to prime them or anything. And I can recall him riding his bike to get to church. Glory be to God. All the way from the west side to the east side on the bike. Now, so don't you ever say nothing about driving. 10, 15 minutes, don't you say it? Glory to God. And uh, furthermore, um, having let the Lord take control over his life through a series of, of events, um, uh, living in an entire different city, and then believing God to increase faithful online practice. I can't remember a service where they said, <laughs> Brother Josh did not show up, glory be to God, online, and then now is officially here at his home church in Anointed Word of Faith Church. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for that. Glory be to God. And we know his wife, his wife and his daughter will be coming soon. Or son, I apologize, will be coming soon. Now, here's what I want you to do. I've got a couple of announcements, so just be easy. I've got a couple of things. Number one, what I want you to do is our brother is moving here, and they are stepping out on faith, our brother and our sister Kristen. Thank God for her. Let's give the Lord a hand for her, too. Glory be to God. Even ribs. Even ribs. Glory be to God. We've heard great reports that she is on fire for the Lord as well. And so um, they are moving here, totally transitioning their lives. This is what I want you to do, AWOC. We're givers, aren't we? Yes. We're givers. We support people. We support our own especially. So they are moving. They're going to need different things for this move. And whatever you have that may be of assistance, I want you to make yourself available. This is good ground, too. You hear me? I already got my seed in, too. Glory be to God. I'm excited about my little seed that I'm about to sow. Glory be to God. But I want you to make yourself available. Let him know. Um, ask what he needs. See what you have. Maybe you've got something to give. Maybe you, you have clothes. You have furniture. Whatever you have to give, come up with something. Because this is the blessed church, right? The word has been working for this church, right? Glory to God. And I want you to bless our brother. Amen? Amen. Come on, do you receive that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Woo, I don't even have to tell you to give the Lord a praise on that. You, you're catching it on your own. Glory to God. Uh, one last thing, one announcement I want to make before uh, we move forward is... Um, uh, as many of you uh, as many of you know, we have a, a dear sister who is family to this church, who has been and was a faithful member to Anointed Word of Faith Church, who is currently incarcerated. Okay, now Jesus said in the Scripture, yeah. He says. Um, as much as you've done it to the, he said, when I was in prison, actually, the scripture says, you visited me. He's talking about what you have done for his people in the body of Christ. Whatever you do for them, you are doing for the Lord. I don't want my sister to be in there not feeling like she is being supported. I want her to know that she has a thriving church family that loves her that supports her and is eagerly anticipating her getting out because the supply of joy and expectation and excitement that she brought to this church when she sat right here every single service is it was phenomenal we loved it so here's what i want you to do i want you to take some time write a short note or a short letter, and I want you to turn that for Sister Shaby, encouraging her, and I want you to turn that in to us. You can get those letters to Sister Trey, uh, her daughter. Get those letters to her. Let her know that she is loved and uh, that she is blessed and that what's in front of her is great. Amen? Amen. She'll be joining us soon. Time's almost up. Lord be to God. Time moving. Time is almost up. The Lord worked a supernatural miracle in her life concerning her freedom. And uh, just wonderful, wonderful. So can you do that for me? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise if you agree. 
Those of you online, if you're looking for somebody to pour into and encourage, well, you don't always start at the pulpit, glory be to God. You don't always start on the platform. Start where you are. If you would like to be a support to our sister, write a letter. If the Lord lays it on you to give her a seed to sow some money to her while she's in there, whatever it is, five, ten dollars, a dollar, I don't care. I'm telling you, it's good ground. Please see us so we can get that to uh, Sister Trey. You can see Sister Trey as well as Sister Lethia for that, and we will ensure that she gets everything you send. Those of you online, you could send it in the form of an email if you'd like to awofc.org. Uh, you can send an email. No, that's the website. Uh, let's see. The website is there too. Um, and you can email on that website at Anointed Word of Faith um, at Anointed Word of Faith dot org is that right yeah, you know you know where it is so you, you know where it is so uh do that and if you just want to email we can copy and paste that and then put that together and have that sent off to her as well amen are we are we in agreement concerning that well glory be to god let's give the lord one more praise and we'll jump into it all right really quick and i want to move i don't want to take up too much of your time glory be to god uh, i have a uh a uh, uh, ministry appointment right after church, Sister Chelsea and I, that we have to get to that is uh, important to us. And so I want to move through this. Turn over with me, if you don't mind, for five minutes for faith to Matthew. Uh, well, looks like they took off my, my, my thing there. In mercy. Ooh Matthew 19. No, it's still here. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Matthew. <laughs> Welcome back. Who? Who is that? Oh, okay. I won't say that name. I'm working on that outward stuff. I'm doing inside. Glory to God. No. Matthew chapter 19. <laughs> uh, Matthew chapter 19. And uh, I want you to take a look, if you would, briefly at verse let's look at verse 16 and we're going to read this really quick right before we jump into that let me give you some context here you know um in the kingdom when you came over into this way of living it's a supernatural place right and uh, the way you get results is by getting revelation of the supernatural. If it, we can probably turn that air off, by the way, if, if you guys, if we need it. I know it probably got a little chilly in here. I don't know. It's, it's only if it's cold that you guys make an executive decision. It feels good to me, glory to God. But, um, and... Uh, You've got to live from revelation to revelation, you and I do. And uh, as it relates to your finances, a part of increase or flowing in the blessing of the Lord where your finances are concerned requires you to totally divorce the way you previously thought about money. I mean, you can no longer afford in the kingdom of God to look at money from the position of money being over you. You can't look at money through the eyes of this slave mentality that you do whatever it takes to get it you chase it, you follow it. No, 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 no. Your money and my money in the kingdom of God is always going to be under assignment. Now I want you to say this with me, say in Jesus name, in Jesus name I, understand I understand that my money, that my money should, work should work for me, for me. Not, me not me for my money. Did you get that? Yes. Come on, that's enough right there. We can go home right there, glory be to God. 
Now you see, money is a tool that you have to always be assigning. Now, you can see a little bit of this in Mark chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Look what the young ruler said really quick with my three minutes left. Glory to God, have mercy. We might need to call this uh, F10, I'll tell you. We might need to say 10 minutes is okay, right? <laughs> and, um, and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life. Okay? Now, in one place, Jesus said, and this is life eternal, that thou mayest know thee, the only true God, and have fellowship with him. Right? Now, look what Jesus says right here in verse 17. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God, and if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, Jesus knows this man is sort of testing him a little bit. So the man, sometimes when people will, when people uh, hit you with things that are superficial and not genuine, you don't even waste the time trying to give revelation back to them. Glory be to God. You just... Give them something just to keep them going. Glory be to God. I won't get much into that. Now, verse 18, um, verse 19, um, Jesus, 18 and 19, Jesus explains to the man the Ten Commandments. You know the laws. Don't do this. Thou shalt not kill, steal, murder, so forth and so on. Love thy, thy um, mother and uh, thy neighbor as thyself, right? These Jews knew that. Now, in verse 20 is where it gets interesting. The man responds and says, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? What am I missing? I've done these things. I've kept the law. And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, now, the word perfect here is the idea of complete, okay? So, notice this. You can be in right standing with the Lord, but if you don't deal with this financial side of life, of the kingdom, then you can be in a place where you are not complete. See, the whole purpose of the cross is that you would be redeemed from the curse, from the power to fail in every area, spiritually, physically, soulishly, socially, and from the lowest form of prosperity, which is what? Finances. Finances. It's, it's crazy that I have to point that out to keep people from being offended. Glory be to God. Financially, right? Now, notice this. And Jesus said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, if you'll be complete, what does he mean? Go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. Go and do what? Go and sell what you have. When you sell what you have, what do you get back? Money. money. Can we agree? He's talking about money right here. Go and take what you have and get money back and then do what with it? And then do what? Give it. What is he talking about? Sowing. Notice, when you do that, when you give to the poor, in this case, thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Now, can we see when you take what you have turn it into seed or to money and give it to somebody else, according to this verse, what happens? You get something back. You'll have treasure in heaven, right? And come and do what? Follow me. So God tells, or Jesus tells this man, he says, hey, go take the money that you already have. Turn it into seed 
and then let me direct how that money is used. Are you seeing this? Now watch the response. Keep going. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had what? Great possessions. That means that the guy was wealthy. Now watch. Then said Jesus unto his disciples. Now he's talking to his people. Now Jesus is about to release revelation. Now you see how I pointed out earlier, he wouldn't give the revelation to the people outside, but he gave it to the people inside. Now watch this. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, or it would be like saying, man, listen, I'm telling you, you got to pay attention to this. This is real. Watch. That a rich man or a wealthy man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Shall hardly enter into the government of heaven. Shall hardly enter into an operation of the kingdom of heaven operated in the earth successfully. Watch this. And again, I say unto you, it is easier, he's emphasizing this, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now this is giving people wars. The eye of a needle at this particular time was a particular location. It was sort of an entryway to go into a particular area of the city. In which case, in which case, before you went into this doorway, it was so narrow that the camel had to be unloaded. You had to take all the supplies off of the camel and then take the camel through and then come back and get the supplies, the goods, and then take that through in order to be able to get into this city. Well, what's he talking about? What he was trying to get over to this man is, hey, forsake the way you have looked at money, the way you've used money, Come over here in the kingdom so I can redo your money. Glory be to God. And then you're going to operate supernaturally instead of naturally. You're going to have treasures in heaven. That heaven is twofold. Heaven is dimensional and it is here in this physical realm. Glory be to God. Do you see that? Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. So God wants you to understand that your money is under his control. You're not a slave to money. God tells you what to do with money, and as long as you listen to what he says, you know what's going to happen? You're going to prosper. You know, I'll say this, and I'll, and I'll sit down, glory be to God, because I can't make you shout. I can't be can't try to make you shout. Um, when, uh, in this church, when we taught the series Kingdom Finances, and, and this is nothing against anybody, but we notice the staff that the first two teachings of kingdom finances, we got the least response, right, of uh, people having received in those first two sessions. Was it two or was it three? Was it two? And uh, I went back and we looked at that and looked at what was talked about. And this is very important. In those sessions, we talked about that your prosperity is connected to being in line with the heart of God. You see what I mean? You cannot separate your money from God's heart. And we noticed that we got the least response on that one, right? That is one that it seemed that people weren't excited to jump out the sheet out, out their seats over. Glory be to God that, wait a minute, I'm just, can't I just go after the money? 
I just need the money, this heart thing. Why do I need all that? Give me something deep. No, that's what's deep about it. Glory be to God. Yeah. Jesus says it is going to be practically impossible to prosper in the kingdom unless you let God direct your financial life. Yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. You are going to make God first concerning your financial yeah. life. First concerning your assignment. First in everything you do. Because you will seek first the kingdom of God and his right way of doing things. And what? All these things will be added unto you. What things? Where you eat, what you eat, what you drink, what you wear, what you live, where you live, where you drive. Glory be to God. Put God first. Now, in Jesus' name, I decree over you that you are not of the sort that turn back, but God is going to be first in everything you do. That you're going to make his agenda and his kingdom first, and as you put him first, he will make sure you are fully supplied, glory be to God, having more than enough. Now, I want you to say this. All grace is abounding towards me because I'm available for every good work, every assignment I've been given will be accomplished in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That was that was five minutes for Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Can we give the Lord a praise for that revelation? Oh, that is yeah. wow, that's holy. That is such a Thank holy thing. We're gonna stand to honor the act of giving because it is a holy thing. Thank Our tithes Lord. and offerings there, your heart is there, so we want to stand to honor that. If you want to give here in person, you can just slip your hand up and Sister Lethia will be over there with a the basket for that. And um, if you would prefer to give online, you can give at awomc.org slash give. Um, there are some offers there. To, I mean, there are some places there where you can give. That's Cash App, um, different places. We've made it super easy for you. Amen. We also want to say that if you need to use the restroom, if you want to greet some folks here just real quick, you have a minute or two to do that. Um, we want to give you guys some time. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise in the house. And everybody, let's go ahead and stand to our feet so we can worship the Lord concerning our giving. And uh, then we will move forward into the next part of the word. Amen. Now, uh, for those of you that if you're not accustomed to this, and those of you that are online, maybe you're joining us 
for the first time. You know, I run into people, man, everywhere I go. I, I mean, I don't hardly go anywhere where I'm not preaching to people some kind of way. Sometimes all I have is three minutes, five minutes. I'm, and uh, some of those people join us online. I ran into one young lady when I go to the airport every week and uh, uh, talk to her uh, about the church and so forth. And I said, um, I said, yeah, let me give it a go. She said, I already signed up or I already followed the Facebook page. I said, well, glory be to God. And uh, I have that all over the country. And so I want those of you to know that I meet and that watch these and go back and look at these videos that uh, God bless you. I want to say that the word works and it's working in here and it'll work for you. Yeah. And uh, as you can, the next step is to get into church. Yeah. Glory be to God. Get in. There is a different supply of the power of God when you are in person that is not the same when you're online. Is that right? Glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. There is a difference between being online and in person. You can't get it all online. You, you just can't do it. Glory yeah. to God. Okay, I'll leave that alone. But God bless you. We love you guys. We're going to worship the Lord concerning our giving. So our habit is, well, first, we have faith for giving. We don't want a bucket plunk. So we have scriptures relevant to giving and our finances. Why do we talk about that? Because the body of Christ has dealt with poverty for way too long. We have assignments, things that need to be accomplished, and the Lord is waiting on you and I to help supply the things that need to be supplied. So he wants us to live beyond just ourselves and live for the benefit of other people. Amen? Amen? So as a result, we're going to release our faith. I'm going to pray. And as uh, after I pray, I will lead you in a confession and we'll move forward. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and lift your tithes <clears throat> and your offering to the Lord as a point of contact. We're going to get back into doing this. Glory be to God. Are you ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that you are our very own Father. We're your children. You've translated us out of darkness into the marvelous light of your kingdom. And we prosper continually going forward, and we are not going back. Jesus, high priest, take our tithe, our offering, our seed to the Lord and worship him on our behalf. Let him know that our heart is in it. Bless him, dance before him for us. And as we do so right now, we claim tithers' rights. We decree that the windows of heaven are open to us and the blessing is poured out on us in overflow. And as we've given, it's been given unto us with good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men are giving into our bosom. Now, I want you to say this after me. Say, in the name of Jesus, the devourer is rebuked for my sake, because right now is harvest season. My harvest is coming to me unhindered, and it's happening now in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a shout of praise if you believe it. Glory to God. You better take that harvest. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. You can have your seats. It's uh, befitting that we talk a little bit about praise, and we're going to be going up further into that subject. Glory be to God. For those of you that don't know, when what I was doing there is praying in tongues, or what the Bible calls praying in the Spirit, and that allows the Lord to get things over to me that my mind typically would not grasp. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As a matter of fact, uh, Brother Josh, come up here really quick. I just want to extend the right hand of fellowship to my brother, and I want you to join me in doing so. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for what he's done in our brother's life. Come on now, come on, let's give, 
Let's give the Lord a hand. Bless God for our brother. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My brother, your story is amazing. Keep going. It's working for you. Absolutely. You ain't seen nothing yet. Glory be to God. You walk in. And we love you, my brother. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's get down to protocol here. Are we ready for this? Are you praying with me? You know, utterance um, is doesn't just come. What I mean utterance is the preacher's ability to preach isn't just based off of his study or how deep he is or, or how spiritual he is. The scripture said that Paul said he desired that the saints pray for him so that he would have utterance. As you pray for me, then the answers that you need come out of me. Isn't that something? Glory be to God. You, you want to be always pulling on. My leaders, I'm pulling on them all the time. Glory be to God. Every time I hear, I'm pulling something out of them. I done pulled all kind of things out. I done pulled cars. I done pulled businesses. I done pulled great marriage and family and houses. Glory be to God. Peace and joy. I've pulled that out of the mouths of the men and women of God, the gifts to the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So that means you're praying for me, right? Yeah. Well, get yourself out of here. Have mercy. Um, we've been in a series uh, for the past several weeks, and this is number, what number is this in the series? This is number four. Well, glory. So this is number four. The title of the series has been, I Shall Not Lack. And uh, if somebody has a water anywhere, I know I drank my last one, glory be to God. Um, I Shall Not Lack. Thank you so much. And um, we've been dealing heavily in Psalms, the 23rd chapter. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and turn back over there. Psalms chapter 23, and uh, we have gotten down to verse 23, or verse 5, and uh, verse 6 is where we're going to pick back up today. Now, let me tell you what you should have been doing to this point, particularly those of you that are members of this church, those of you that are members in person and those of you that are members online, because we have both, right? You should have been measuring what has been preached from week to week to this point. And what you are saying and the actions that you are taking should be following what has been preached. Does that make sense? Yes. So last week, we talked about, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, that I will fear no evil. So we talked about not being in fear, understanding that the Lord is with us. Well, from last week to this week, there should have been something concerning your confession that says, I refuse to fear. Because what God has for you in, in your future is so big that your natural mind doesn't really know how to handle it. Your natural mind and your flesh always wants to play it safe. But let me tell you this, you only have one life. And you don't have a very long time here on earth. You don't have any time to waste. You don't have any time to be wasting productivity. It's time to get it, and it's time to get it now in every area of life. Does that make sense? Yes. And sometimes when your natural mind is confronted with how major and how awesome what in front of you is, your mind just can't handle it sometimes. <laughs> it just can't take it. It's like, you know what? You know, uh, man, you better come back down to reality. 
You better come out of the clouds, but sometimes you got to tell your flesh, flesh, yes. shut up. Glory be to God. I don't pay no attention to you. We believe what the word of God says. God loves me and he's with me. And what? I will not be afraid. Now, between last week and this week, at some point, it would have been a good idea to say that. To say that. I refuse to fear. I don't care. You should always be pursuing something. Amen? Amen. Every believer, you are never supposed to be still. You are never supposed to be doing nothing. You're supposed to be going higher and higher, abounding. And Now, that is uncomfortable to your flesh. Your flesh doesn't want to do all of that. My flesh, the flesh just wants to just... You know, once you use your faith to pull down something big, flesh is like, okay, we good, but just be easy, we good. We don't need to do anything else. No, 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 no. There will never be a time where you're not using your faith. Either you're using your faith for you or you're using your faith for what? For somebody else, for the assignment that you have. Does that make sense? Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. For an opportunity to speak words, Lord, from heaven today. And uh, Lord, I'm asking that you would speak through me today. Words, Lord, that have answers in them. That have comfort in them. Words that expose the attack, the tricks of the enemy. <clears throat> And Lord, I pray that you would anoint me to do what I cannot do in and of myself. That this word would flow out of me in excellence, that it would be accurate, and that it would be done in boldness, Holy Ghost boldness. I believe I received that, sir. Now, Satan, I break your power, and I cancel your assignment. I decree this word will come forward today unhindered by you or anything that you do. And furthermore, that this word will be confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles. And those who hear, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Now... Over in Psalms, the 23rd chapter, I want to give you a context of this, and let's go ahead and make sure that time is started, because I don't want to miss my time here. I don't want to go past the anointing. Um, <laughs> When you and I got born again, we were put into, you can almost call it, maybe one of the most intense warfares or battles that has ever existed. The battle that is taking place right now is more intense and bigger than any history battle that has ever taken place. And that battle is a spiritual battle. Now, I say battle because the war has already been won, okay? So we're not in a war to try to determine who is going to win it. See, you and I are fighting a battle within a war that has already been won. That's extremely important to understand. So now what you and I are doing is we are collecting the spoils. Amen. 
We are enforcing the authority and then of uh, the authority of heaven within where we've been assigned. And furthermore, we're on a rescue mission to rescue people from the vigilantes that are still out there, the demonic kingdom. Are you with me so far? These are lawbreakers. These are criminals. <laughs> They are illegal beings running around the earth, and they're killing people. They're, they, let me tell you the stuff they're doing. Are you ready for this? Yes. They're destroying marriages. They're breaking in people's houses. Yes. They're putting sickness and disease on people. They're stealing everybody's money. Did you get to that? Stealing money, glory be to God. Robbing big money, robbing millions and millions and billions and trillions of dollars. That's what they're doing. Now, since the war is already won, our place in the battle is on the good side. And there's really only one battle that you and I are supposed to be fighting. It is called the good fight of faith. Everything about your life now in the earth should consist of you using your faith to take back, to bring liberty to enforce and to expand the assignment of God in the earth until it's time to go. One scripture said, Jesus told the disciples, he said that I want you to occupy until I come. Occupy, one man of God said, and I totally agree with the definition, having looked it up and studied it, means to advance and hold. That's our position while we're in the earth, to advance the kingdom and hold it. Don't lose it. Don't lose anything that you go grab for the kingdom of God. Now, this is interesting because this totally changes the mentality of the typical Christian in the earth now. This totally takes selfish, self-consumed, survival-minded living out of the equation. Am I talking too deep for you? Are you still here? Have you gone home? Are you sure you can follow this? Glory be to God. Now, you got to catch this by revelation. Your mind may not get it, but you got to catch this in your spirit. So, there is no place... There is nowhere in this kingdom right now for you to sit down. Do you understand? There are no seats around here. There are stations of assignment that you and I should be moving in. And as you move in what you are assigned to do, starting first with your personal life, Hello? You said how Bishop Cooper used to say it right over here. Hello? As you redeem the time, redeem, work out your own soul salvation and increase, then God is glorified. We talked about that, right? What does that mean? He, in one translation, it actually translated... God is made famous. Did you hear that? Yes, I said it. God is made famous. Famous people, what happens to famous people? People are what? They're drawn to them. When you get your needs met, when you increase, when you get what you pray for, God is made famous he becomes known, and he gets the credit. Amen. 
Everything about your increase and the increase of others gives God the credit. I don't care what the religious preachers are telling you. I don't care how much the religious preachers tell you, you better watch out for that prosperity preaching. Go on and watch out for it then. Go on and watch out. <laughs> Go on and watch. You do it that way, and we're going to stay over here in the increase camp, and we're going to see how this thing end up. Glory be to God. This word will work if you work it. Glory to God. Oh, I better leave that alone. Okay, well, let me back. Let me let me backtrack. Okay, now I'm just in the intro. I ain't moved nowhere just yet. Head first. I didn't use one about nine, ten minutes. Eh? Glory to God. Now, so in the battle of faith, there are going to be things in your way. That the enemy is behind, and those things will need to be dealt with. All right, and and primarily where they'll need to be dealt with is in your soul. Because, and I want to, and I've been talking about the scripture for two weeks, and I want to say it all over again. I've talked to people all the same, like from state to state about this verse. John said, I would that you prosper and be in health. Or I would that you prosper and increase outwardly, even as your soul prospers oh. or increases inwardly. Yeah. So what is happening inwardly in your mind, yes. in your will or your decision making, in your emotions, in your imagination, right? In your um, intellectual capacity. Yes. What is happening there? is directly connected to the increase that you're getting on the outside. Yeah. Not just financially, even where your relationships are concerned. Yeah. Do you understand this is not yeah. just about money? Yeah. Are you, I get a bad rap with this money thing, but I'm telling you, this is bigger than that. <laughs> but money is absolutely a part of it as well. Don't get that twisted. Now let's get that understood. Right? So... Everything about this book or the Word of God is trying to get your soul to prosper. Because as your soul prospers and increases, you start seeing what to do. And then you start going and laying hands on the things that ultimately cause you to go higher, to succeed, to be better. And God gets the glory. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Now, considering that, verse 5 says right here, David, who is, David was a man after God's own heart. And David was also a musician, or watch this, a worshiper. David was a worshiper. David understood that life was all about purpose and assignment from the very beginning, even when he was a teenage boy. As a teenage boy, he was covenant-minded. He dreamed when nobody else was around, out in the field, glory be to God, fighting bears <laughs> and lions, right? Now, people like that, you're going to notice, are going to be prosperous people. David was an extremely prosperous individual. Can we see that? Yeah. So what David is describing here is coming from someone who is mission-minded, assignment minded and somebody who understands the necessity of praise and worship. Are you with me? Yes. 
David was so anointed that he would play an instrument and it would literally fight off demons. Right? Now, from that guy, David was also a man that was accustomed to resistance. He had enemies. A lot of times he was faced at one particular season of his life often actually with enemies that were close to him, people that were like family to him, yeah. you know, people close to him that dealt with extreme amount of envy and jealousy towards him. He was navigating people like that, literally trying to kill him. Are you with me? Yes, and considering all of that and being anointed by God, seeing into the realm of the spirit in a way that people at this time didn't see. David talks about this under inspiration of the Holy Ghost. It says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Now, do I have a few minutes just to break this down? Are you still here or have you gone home? Do you got your coffee? Glory to God. Are you ready? You can watch the TV show longer than this, glory be to God. Now watch this. Thou preparest, that word prepare uh, in the Hebrew is a Hebrew word uh, pronounced as best as I can. I'm not a Hebrew scholar. Uh, arak. Arak. A-W-R-A-K for pronunciation, although it's a little, it's weird the way they say it, but. That's how you spell it, Lord be to God. A-W-R-A-K. Now, that word translated prepare in the English right here actually means to arrange or set in order in a official capacity. So let's stop, translate, and meditate. He says here concerning God that God, you arrange and set in order in a official capacity. What? A table. You, you arrange, you set in order in a official capacity. In the Hebrew here, this almost paints the picture of a legal setting in a court proceeding. This is official in the highest manner. You set in order. This has been ordained as the official way of operating. What? A table. Now, that word table in the Hebrew is the word shilhon. So if you are speaking Hebrew and reading that first sentence or those first couple of statements, you could say, Arak Shilhon. Okay? Now, the word table here in the Hebrew means this. Uh, the table was a, it signified a king's table. And this was a place that was sacred where official business was carried out. This was also a place of honor. When the king would say to someone in the kingdom, hey, I want you from now on to come and eat at my table. Then that person's financial status and social status was being elevated from wherever it was up to the level of the king himself. He was considered almost family at this place. Does that make sense? So the Lord right here has made it official from a place of honor from a place where things of the utmost importance have been decided. Watch this. Have been decided. Let's read the rest of the text. Before me or in the presence of my enemies. Now, I've got to demonstrate this. 
Are you are you ready so that you'll yeah. get it? That, no, can I get some help in here? Glory be to God. Brother Josh, since you're here, why don't you come up and help me? Glory be to God. Brother Josh, Brother Mark, I need you to help me today. Glory to God. Stand right over there on that side. Okay, let's see how to do this. You know, I never pre-planned these, so I never know how they're going to go. Glory be to God. I just step on out there by faith. Glory be to God. Now, look at the text right here. Let's, let's break this down. The Lord arranges in order in an official. Uh, Jair, why don't you come up here and help me too, actually. Come up here and help me really quick. The Lord arranges and sets in order in an official capacity. So, Brother Mark, if you'll stand right here up front. Actually, back up a little bit, and Jair, you stand in front of him right there and face that way. Right here in front. You have to stand right there. There you go. Have mercy. Now, the idea right here is that the Lord has arranged in a particular order. You see the order here? Mm -hmm. One and two. From small to big, if we can use that as an example. There's, a, there's an organization here. This is done in a way that is meticulous, that is on purpose, right? Now, not only is it done that way, this is considered honorable. And not only is it considered honorable, this is also considered um, the place where huge problems are solved, where that kingdom is concerned. Are you with me? This is a place of extreme importance. In other words, I'm telling you, this thing is not set up without reason. This thing is set up because there is something major that you have to go all the way up to this level in order to make sure it's taken care of. Are you with me? Yes. Now, thou preparest this order for me in the presence of my enemies. Come on, enemy. Stand right here. <laughs> Turn that way and face them. Now, actually, I want you to face right here and keep a sight on it. You know how them enemies do, right? You know, them enemies will be watching you from the cut a little bit. Like, like, yeah, I'll see you over there. Don't worry about it. I'm going to be the scene. Don't worry about it. We're going to get them. They're coming out, man. About two hours. They come. We're going to get them. You know, this is, this is the kind of, this is how your enemy operates. He plots. You see what I mean? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'll say that. Especially where that religious spirit is concerned. You've got to resist the temptation to turn religious after you've come into faith. Did you hear that? You've got to resist the temptation to try to lean on your own understanding of what godly living is based off of what you think or what you heard before you came into faith. That's good. When you come into faith, you stay in a place of humility saying, I don't really know what to do unless I'm told by the Lord. I am dependent on what the Lord says, on what his word says. And the, and the leadership of people that have been successful before me in order to potentially get those same results. Are you with me? Yes. Don't come in and try to recreate anything. Glory be to God. Don't come in and try to make your own way. Follow in the level of anointing that's already been established. Are you with me? Yes. Now watch this. Are you getting something out of this? Yes. Yes. Now, in the presence... The word presence right here is an interesting word. Presence in the English would imply 
something like in the space of, in the physical space of, if I'm in the presence of Jair, then I am in the same vicinity as he is. That is not what the word presence means right here. The word presence in the Hebrew actually means something that causes distress, mm. harassment, hostility, something that presses you in tight. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Thou preparest an official honorable place of high order for me when I am facing or dealing with something causing me distress. Are you with me? Something that is causing difficulty. Now, I'd like to, just for a second, if you'd humor me, and just allow me to give you the English definition of the word distress right here. And I just got that from the Holy Ghost. I think it would be good. I want to read this definition for you. One definition in the English says... Extreme anxiety, sorrow, or pain. Mm. That's good. Isn't that something? Now look, God does this and has officially ordained this order for distress coming up against me. Now watch. In the presence of my enemies. Now, I want you to consider this. God has ordained that there's something that you and I are supposed to do when we are facing these kind of things. Look at the rest of the text. Thou anointest or anoint my head with oil. So the idea here we're dealing with is God has ordained something right here particularly to be used when? When I'm under distress. When I'm facing something difficult. Are you with me? When I'm facing something that's calling me, causing me pain or anxiety, okay. are you with me? Yeah, you. Calling me sorrow or pain. There's a number of things you can put right here. This can be spiritually, physically, soullessly, socially, and financially, relationally, any of that. When I'm dealing with that, the first thing to understand about the fact that you have a shepherd that has been leading you is that he has already set up something to deal with it. Now, because you and I are living supernaturally, you have to fight the good fight of faith, meaning you don't try to fix this in your own strength. You find out what has already been done, and then you tap into that in order to deal with this enemy. Do you see that? Yes, see, religion will never let you do that. Religion is always suggesting some solution that's way out there and I don't know land and hopefully you tap into it and then it works and you get relief. No, no, no. Faith cometh from hearing what? What God already said. And the battle we fight is the good fight of what? What God already said. So when I face something, what do I do? I don't panic. When I face distress, I go back and see what God already said. If you do that, it'll keep you out of religion. It'll keep you out of religion, and it'll keep you out of toil. See, in religion, I've got to say it again because somebody needs to get this. 
you're always trying to find a solution out there in, in nowhere land that's not substantiated. And you search forever. You search, you cry, you pray hard, you fast, you spit, you do everything, hoping that you hit pay dirt. And you assume, because of the fancy religious preachers that you've listened to, right? Religious preachers, that somehow that's God's way of doing things. No, no, no. We fight the good fight of faith. We go back and see what God's word has already said about it. I can't tell you, when I was first saved, I was first saved and I was in regular Christianity, in, in religion. That's where it was. I'm just saying. I, I love everybody. That's where it was. And in regular Christianity, man, I would come up with, I'm racking my brain trying to come up with the solution to, oh, to every problem. I see. Yeah. Maybe I need to fast more. Maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to do that. It's just never ending. Lord have mercy. Well, when I came into living by faith, I found out, let me go see what the word has already said about this yes. thing. And begin to put that in my eyes, in my ears, and out of my mouth. And you know what happened? Then I start getting results. Now, I notice that if I won't do that, I won't get results. I notice that I can have a knowledge that I need to do that. But until I actually do it, nothing changes. Do you get that? Until I actually correspond in action and actually do it, nothing changes. Isn't that good? Woo, I'm almost got it. Now watch this. Jared, get back up there front. Get back up there front. Keep my order. Scoot up just a little bit. Now, watch this. Thou anointest my head with oil. Now, the word anoint right here, when you see it in the Bible, in the New Testament and the Old Testament, You'll see the word anoint, but it's translated. It's what the translators have called anoint. But different places, depending on where you see it, there is a different Hebrew or even Greek word for it. In this particular case, the Hebrew word here is da shame. Da shame is the word that the translators translated anoint. And it means this. Now, are you ready for this? I told you I had some I had some for you, right? Because the good news is how we live. That's how we go from faith to faith. Faith to faith only operates with good news. It doesn't work with bad news. It says the definition here means to become fat or prosperous. Did you see did, did you get that? I don't think you saw it. Let me, just, let me just talk about this a little bit. In the presence of what is causing me distress, sorrow, grief, pain, standing in my way, thou has officially ordained and established from an honorable place Something that would cause me to be made prosperous over it. It is my prosperity over whatever is causing me distress has already been ordained. Lord, I've been believing for this, but I haven't got it yet. Don't worry about it. Go back to what's already been done. Go with me to God. Isn't that something? Woo-wee. Does it feel good in here? Is that just the air conditioner making me do that? Which one is that? Go with me to God. Now watch this. In the Hebrew, the words are, the language is so much bigger that it can't be explained just with a few English words in a lot of cases. Because the Hebrew language is so big and the English language is so small. Well, look what else this word means in the Hebrew. The implication of this word in the Hebrew also means a place of festivity and joy. Now, you got to connect the dots. A place of festivity and joy. Now, don't let me miss this. 
Terry, if I miss it, keep me on track. Keep me on track. Don't let me miss it. Let's connect the, the dots. Thou preparest a table for me. Meaning, thou officially arranged and established from a sacred place for official use something concerning the presence of mine enemies. Anything causing me distress. Right? Something has been established officially to use for it. Right? And then thou has anointed me or established prosperity increase joy and or joyous festivities particularly when I'm dealing with this enemy do you see that you, you, do you see what's about to connect right here do you understand where this is going God has anointed and established in order. This is God's honorable place and way to deal with my enemies. And what he has established is supposed to produce my prosperity, my increase over this, particularly concerning what is causing me distress. Watch the text. Just, just watch the text. Are you still here? Don't nobody move but me. You might miss it. Don't move. Now watch this. Ooh, Lord. Turn over to Psalm 8 really quick. Go while I got the anointing. Psalm 8 chapter. Psalm the 8th chapter, verse 1. Psalm 8, verse 1. Watch this. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth who have set thy glory above the heavens. What is that? What are you doing right there? What's that? Huh? That's worship, right? This is worship and praise right here. Why? Watch this. Watch this. And notice this is being done in the form of singing. Are you hearing me? This is being done in the form of singing and verbal acknowledgement of who God is and what he's already done. Do you see that? Yes. Now watch this, verse 2. Here it is, right here. Don't miss it. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, babes and sucklings, which means toddlers and babies, out of their mouths. What kind of people are these? People that are dependent on somebody else to get what they need. That's you and I. We, this is talking about the believer that is dependent on God in order to deal with anything that they're facing. Do you see the dependency that you need right here? Do you see that this kind of praise is coming from a place of dependency that says, Lord, I cannot do it without you. And this is coming out of my mouth. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling hast thou what? Ordained. Here we are again. Has officially established. Watch this. Strength, which is the idea of power or might, because of what? Thine enemies. That thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Look at the picture right here. The reason why you don't lack in this area is because God has already set up and established an avenue that would cause you to prosper and be successful over anything that is coming up against you, causing you distress, anything that is in your way. And do you know what that official, sacred, 
put together from the inner table of the King of Kings, Lord of Lords is praise is what it is. Glory be to God. Praise is the secret gun of prosperity. Glory be to God. Praise will take you places that you otherwise cannot get past things that are causing distress in your life. Do you hear that? Now, this is why I say when you come into church and they say, and they start saying, they can come into church and they say, this is, a, you ought to be, this is a day. This is a day. Woo, you ought to be getting it in. Right? Because it has been considered honorable. See, you think that if you dance or if you move, you're not cute, right? But according to this word, your dance and the words out of your mouth are honorable to God. You see what I mean? And they have been officially ordained to do what? Steal the enemy and the avenger. Steal means to stop him. To cause him to cease or to sin. See, sometimes you don't need to go pray more. Sometimes you don't need to go fast more. Sometimes you just need to say, in Jesus' name, Lord, I give you the glory. Lord, I give you honor. Lord, I thank you that it's already done. Lord, you worked it out. Glory to God, I give you praise. I thank you that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You've already done it, and I celebrate it. Then you get on the good foot. You get your step on. Glory be to God. You got to get that thing. Now, what did he ordain it to come out of? There is an official capacity concerning the use of this secret gun of prosperity. It is out of the mouth of those who are depending on him. Do you see that? There ain't no such thing as no quiet, prosperous believer. Did you hit the uh oh? Oh, did I mess you up? Woo, you might need to go get a different women, you might need to go get a different mascara. Because this thing gonna cause you to get messy, glory be to God. Uh men, you, you may wanna learn you all two step. I'm just telling you, you, you may wanna put off the cool swag and, and get over here and no longer care how you look. Because your victory is connected. To your prayer, and sometimes praise won't come out cute. Sometimes it won't come out. Holy, <laughs> Amen, <laughs> Amen, Glory. No, 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 no. Sometimes it's gonna come out. Glory, thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I found. Let me tell you something. Chelsea and I were <laughs> dealing with volume at work that means writing business and we were doing everything it seemed that needed to be done and uh, I said Lord where are we missing it that means we gotta get some more money in here Lord where, where are we missing it? I know you we're supposed to be prosperous what, what's, what's going on and the Lord took me to uh, Charles Capps and Charles Capps, who really helped us understand how to use faith in the body of Christ, he said that he ran into a situation like this, and he said, Lord, what's happening? Why are things not moving the way they used to move? And he said, it's because you stop talking to it. You stop saying something. Isn't that something? And so, now that was his situation. And the Lord said to me, because you got to be led, right? He said, Al, that's part of your situation. You've got to say something, and you need to say it in the form that I have ordained. In the form of praise. Glory be to God. So I start going. I'd be before I get on the plane, or right after I get off the plane, I said, Thank you, Lord. That we are being successful, that clients are coming into us, Lord be to God, that need us, that want us, that we are increasing. We see you do it supernaturally, not how your natural mind is programmed to work. You prosper, you 
you prosper from a, you know, the Bible says that the wisdom of God, the things of God are foolishness to the world or the natural thinking mind. See, this is why you don't have time to listen to a whole lot of natural stuff. This is why you need biblical speaking versus motivational speaking. Do you hear me? I'm not saying anything is wrong with motivation, but they can't get you but so far. Glory be to God. You need the supernatural to see because the motivational speakers are never going to tell you, hey, if that thing's not working out, go get your praise on. I bet you don't see that in a book, in a motivational book. I guarantee you won't see that. I guarantee you Warren Buffett ain't going to have that. You ain't going to see that in this book, glory be to God. No, you're going to have to come to this book. You're going to have to come to this book. And you're going to find out that there have been things supernaturally established from days of old before the foundation of the world set aside for the born-again believer to use on purpose by faith that guarantees his prosperity over anything that causes him distress. Is that wonderful? Man, I thank God that I grew up in a church environment where the people understood how to praise. I may have grown up in religion, but I didn't grow up around people that didn't know how to praise. I'm telling you what, my pastor never let me be, that's how my pastor would always know if I was sinning or not. If I wasn't praising, he knew I was in sin. Because you know when you're sin, yet praise or rob, you won't feel like getting up and praising. But I'm telling you, if you even if you in sin, you better praise and get out of it. Don't you sit down. You praise and get. That's your way of telling the Lord, I'm still going. I've forgotten those things that are behind me. I believe what's in front of me is greater. There is no condemnation to me because you said it. Yes. You keep going, baby. I'm telling you what, you don't stop. And they'd look over, and I thank God for this to this day that I was, I got to see a godly man. I tell you, I'm trying to be this way to help the, the men around me to understand this everywhere I go. I saw a godly man delight himself in praise and worship unto a holy God. I saw him not care. He literally made praise and worship as a man look like the coolest thing on the earth. When I got born again, I said, that's what I want to be. I want to praise like that. Boy, there'd be times where I could be, I'd be on the keys. I'd be on the keys playing. And everybody's playing, everybody's saying, Next thing you know, I done jumped up and ran off the stage, jumped up. Hey, glory! You ain't lived until you get you some of that. You have not lived until you get you some of that. Men, you, it will, it, it. your wife will become putty in your hands when she sees you're not ashamed to praise him. One scripture says, God said, if you, Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me, embarrassed concerning me and the principles that I've told you to live by, the things I've told you to do, I will be ashamed of you before my father. See, this is why when I go out in public, I don't care what I say. I don't care if I'm in the finest dining restaurant in all of existence and the food is $100 a plate. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you, Lord, that you've taken sickness and disease from my midst. Thank you, Lord, that all grace is about it. Lord, be making me sufficient all things. I'm abounding to every good work in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm hoping somebody asks me what I'm doing. Go and be to God. I got a yen right there. I can go to tell them how to get it. Don't you be hiding now. This ain't what we do. 
See, this is where you'll develop your identity. If you'll do things God's way and not try to hold on to the world's way of doing things and interacting, you will develop an identity of boldness and power that the world will be drawn to as long as you try to be too cool for school. When I was young, I was 18, I got locked up in the, and the brother said to me, one of my older cousins said to me that was in there, he was like, little cuz, you too cool for school, man. Because I had gotten really good at using the coolest words, the best, the newest, hippest lingo because of the area I was in. I mean, I just thought that that was the way you were supposed to be. Man, once I got born again, I have woken up at times, I have been so gone in the spirit concerning praise and worship that I have come to stretched out on the ground in church services. Laid out flat, waking up, not even knowing how I got there. Brother, um, um, who are our partners that come here? Um, the Keatons. Brother Keaton told us one time, everybody know who the Keatons are? We're at our house eating one day, and the Keatons explained to us how in the Brother Hagen meetings, that's where they were at, in the Brother Hagen meetings, that the Spirit of God got so strong and so powerful that uh, Brother Keaton that preaches here literally froze in place for hours, was it not? Froze in place. And that he was froze so long that they had to go to the back and say, Brother Hagen, he's not moving. What do we do? Brother Hagen laid his head, told the one, well, he said, well, let's see if this works. He said, I'm, I'm commissioning you to go out there and lay hands on him to bring him out of him. He said, if it don't work, come back and tell me. I'll go and do it. Well, the man, the brother went out there, laid hands on him, and dear Brother Keaton came back. Glory to God. See, we can have experiences like that in here. We can have experiences where the glory of God will come in your presence and you got a better chance of it happening in church than you do at home. Did you get that? It can happen better here in church than at home. Why? Because the supply that your brothers and sisters of the Lord bring to this environment is intoxicating. Glory be to God. It makes much power available when we come together. I don't care what you say. We are stronger together than we are apart. I don't care what you say. You got to tell them when you witness to them and you invite them to church. Like, listen, sis, my brother, the anointing is stronger. The benefits are tangible, are better when you come together. That's why the writer said, forsake not. The assembly, don't stop coming together. He says, while this anointing gets to flow, all the more should you be coming together in the last days. <sighs> Telsey, we were isolated from everybody because we literally, we gave up everything. We walked away from mother, brother, father, yes. sister, houses. Can I testify about something real quick? I know y'all been standing. I know been, are y'all okay? Yeah. Don't be mad. Y'all ain't mad at me for standing so long. <laughs> people don't lie. You know, they be like, why you got them standing up there all day? You know, that's how people do when you old screens, right? That's how they do. Chelsea and I were leaving our house last night. What the Lord gave us. And we start getting together, connecting the dots. We went and, by the way, I found this the greatest food truck ever in existence. Glory be to God, last night. With some, uh, what was some lamb, lamb chops or something? Ooh, we okay, okay, I'm, I'm back, I'm back. But what Chelsea and I do is we dream together. From day one, man, that's we dream together. 
And we just start connecting the dots. And we said, I said, babe, do you realize when we were living in downtown Cincinnati, we had this beautiful condo Everything. that had this certain, the pastor was there, she was there. She came by, glory be to God, when we was there. And we had this beautiful condo and we wanted to be in a downtown area. Well, we didn't know at the time that that area was full of witchcraft all over the place. We didn't know it, see, we wasn't with the Lord. And we had this beautiful condo and when the Lord called us out to follow him, like he tried to get that rich man to do. See, the man would have been, had been more rich than he ever was before, and he would have been able to keep it with peace. And we said to each other, we are giving this up. We left it. We sold S O W E D the furniture. We so we were and Chelsea buy expensive stuff too. Glory be to God. We just walking down the street. Hey, do you want this? Do you want that? We we're, we're just excuse my language if I can say we were geeked up. Glory be to God. We were going in the blessing and we knew we were headed in the blessing. We didn't care. And here we get in our new house. We saw some of the exact same things that we walked away from now times 10. Glory be to God. Do you see that? The downtown, this is the downtown that the Lord was trying to get us to, the downtown where we are now. The house, this is the house the Lord was trying to get us to, at least for right now. Glory be to God. And the family of believers yes, that's it. That's it right there. that are around us now is the family that we've been waiting on. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is the family that we have been waiting on. We're getting it back 100 fold. Glory be to God. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Real family. Glory be to God. We've forsaken all to follow you, Lord, and this is what you do. You guys are a manifestation of a trust in God that we should not lack. And I get excited about it. Glory be to God. Listen, you guys are in our hearts 24 7 it said we wake up with you we lay down with you every time you get a victory to us it's a victory we count it as our victory god am i making this up you know chelsea tell on me too and that's a tell them if i don't tell it right every time something good happens to you every bit of progress you make to us it is happening to us. Glory be to God. We on pins and needles waiting for your next miracle. Glory be to God. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Surely, the last verse, because I got to start a new series next Sunday. I got I to gotta, I gotta move. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you yes. all the days of your life. Maybe some of the days of your life. All the days of my life. Maybe half of the days. No, all the days of my life. You have the right to expect it. Oh my God, it's too good to be true. Great! That's exactly where God wants it. Keep shooting. Keep going for the impossible. Yes, exactly. Keep looking for the unlikely. Yes. Keep looking beyond what you asked or what you thought. Because clearly enough is not enough. Too much is barely cutting it. Glory be to God. Because you serve a God of more 
than enough. In Jesus' name. Do you receive it? Yes. Now, come on. Everybody stand it. We got to seal this. I need about two minutes for you to look crazy. For you to sound crazy. Hallelujah. You online, I don't care where you are. You go get Thank in you your Lord car God. if you got to. I Thank need about Jesus. two minutes. And Hallelujah. it's time that you get out of yourself Hallelujah. and release a praise yeah. that says, Lord, you've already done it. Yeah. Prosperity over my situation yeah. is coming to me now. Come on, let's pray. I say be loosed in the name of Jesus. Of anything plaguing you in the name of Jesus. Anything in your way in the name of Jesus, I say be free of it right now in the name of Jesus. Be free right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Things being unlocked. Provision coming supernaturally in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural restoration. Strengthen in the inner man. Healing, sustain. Will not faint. Will not faint in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good days. Good days in the name of Jesus. Oh, Paul, Tande, Kolobadi, Oresa Kareno. Good days. Mo Karandele Sukrondele Sukronte de Sika. In the name of Jesus. Family never seen coming. In the name of Jesus. Security. Love. Wrapping his arms around you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Boresa kani endo kuda. Bora tele sikra bele tuba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Mokrendele sikarambalebe tono krota. Makrendele se krota ne sikete. Makrendele sikende. Mokronde. Brother Mark, Brother Josh, go on there and grab Krisha. You might have to hold her up, bring her out here. Mokarambalian bono se kimene. Ondele sine kubane kubase kobe. Mekorebe liandono shakoba ita mondo. Mokarandele be komande. Arase neleke na kande be sando lolo kobata. Mora se koba le karande. Mokrandele se krandele se krobale. Mokrombale se kiantana se krota. Mokrandele se kende be kota. Mokrandele se akrandoba kasete. In the name of Jesus, ought not this woman be loosed from her infirmity? In the name of Jesus, I curse every sickness in your body. I curse the plague of your inner parts. And I break it now in the name of Hallelujah. Jesus. And I say be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Devil, you take your hands off of her insides yes. now yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I say be healed yes. and be made whole Glory in Jesus' God. name. Yes. Come on, give the Lord a praise for that. Hallelujah. Come on, release your faith. Hallelujah. Come on, release your faith. Hallelujah. Come on, you got to say something. Say in Jesus' name. From this day. I decree that I'm healed from that which has plagued me. I'm healed from the inside out from this day in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Be healed now in Jesus' name. Go, devil. Come here, Chelsea. Come here, Chelsea. You dealt with this. In the name of Jesus, the same anointing power that went through your body, that went through your body, that healed you of the same thing, I believe that it will transfer out of you directly to her right now. Lay your hands on there. In the name of Jesus, command it out. Thank you, Lord God. What's your name? What's the name of the Lord? Command it out. Say, be healed. Be healed. Be made whole. Cooperate. Work properly. Pray. You go. Be healed. Be made whole. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Come on, y'all ain't praise it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you take that healing from the point of contact. The day you get it, you take it. You start declaring it. You start decreeing it. You take it from that day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Corendele Sukronda. AWFC, I see increase in the house. Hallelujah. I see increase in the house. Glory be to God. I see each one of you multiplying in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Now listen. Listen. The Lord said that this is the year of increase, yes. consider right there. Yes. This is the year of harvest. Yes. Do not back away 
from your harvest. Yes. I don't care what it's looked like. I don't care how delayed it has looked. Do not back away from your harvest. This is your harvest year. You're going to take territory this year that will outweigh all the territory you've taken in the last five years in Jesus' name. Do you receive it? Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the time of accelerated harvest. I'm telling you right now this year, the doors are open. Go and be to God. I'm telling you, supernatural recovery this year. Not next year. This year. You got to get used to talking supernaturally. Get used to thinking supernaturally. Get used to expecting the impossible. Favor. Favor. Coming to you now. Glory be to God. Woo! Favor, coming to you now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't beg for nothing. Receive it. Decree it. Claim it. Don't beg for nothing. Expect it. Enough is not enough. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't talk broke another day in your life. You'll never be broke spiritually. You'll never be broke down physically. Yes. You'll never be broke down soulishly in yes. your mind, will, and emotions. You won't be broke down or lonely yes. soulishly or socially in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. yes. You sure won't be broke financially. Glory be to God. In the name of Jesus. Come on, do you receive that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you're watching us online and you have not yet made Jesus your Lord and Savior, the doors are wide open right now. Make a decision in your heart right now. And pray this prayer after me. Mean it. And today you will go from death to life. And I want everybody to help me say it. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You are, you are who you say you are. You say you are. The Son of God. The Son of God. You died, you died for, my sins, for my sins. So that I would be, so that I would be whole, whole and, born again. and born again. I repent, I repent for a life, for a life of, sin. of sin. Forgive me. Forgive me. I turn, I turn from, what I know from what I know to you. To Take my life. Take my life. Do, something Do something with it. With it. Make me, Make me. Born, again. born again. I receive it. I, receive it. I take it. I take and it. I claim it, I claim it. Now. now in Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Hey Amen. If you're online, we believe if you prayed it, it's real. Yes. And right then and there, the change took place on the inside of you. Claim it. And you've got to tell somebody. Message in. Let us know. The Bible says, let those who have had this experience been redeemed say so. Let us know so we can be an encouragement to you. That we can be a support and a help in your new kingdom life. Do we receive that? Amen. Give the Lord one more praise for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to dismiss. And the way we dismiss here at home, I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but I read the first part that says, what in front of you is greater and everyone else here, including those of you online, say in unison, than anything you've ever seen 
That's what we believe, and that's how we live, and it happens because we say it. Do you agree with that? I'm going to say the first part, and then you're going to repeat me. Are you ready? Are you sure? Are you ready? Glory to God. Now, what's in front of you is greater than anything you've ever seen. Glory to God. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Thank you, Lord. Consider yourselves...